G'day. Some years ago when I visited Brisbane, I caught a cab, a taxi. And in and of itself, that's nothing very unusual. But when this cab driver stood out of the cab and unfolded, he was astonishingly tall. He towered way above me. I'm not a particularly tall person myself, but this man was very tall. As we were travelling to my destination, I asked him if he wouldn't mind sharing just how tall he was. And he looked at me with a bit of a grin and he said, I'm six foot 19. Now, those of you, my friends in America, in the United States will understand immediately what that is and just have a good idea just how tall this gentleman was. Uh, and I grew up with feet and inches, so I would understand this, but the younger generations in Australia grew up with decimal measurements, with metric, and uh, they understand metres and centimetres and the like. So I'll interpret the joke for them. Here he is. He said he was six foot 19 inches. In today's money, or at least in the metric, we, he would have said he was one metre and an extra 131 centimetres. Now you see, he played a slight, slight little, or well, made a little bit of a joke of it. The fact is that there are 12 inches in a foot and 19 is significantly more than 12. So if we actually take 12 of those inches out, he was in fact seven feet, and take 12 away from it, seven feet, seven inches. Uh, I would have loved him on my basketball team. But, so if you're in the United States, measure that against the wall and just see what this man was like. I wondered how he could possibly fit behind the wheel. Uh, for those of you in Australia or elsewhere in the world using metric, if we take a hundred of these centimetres to make another metre, he was really two metres and 31 centimetres. Uh, that's roughly that much more than two metres, and two metres is up here. He was a very tall man. Why do I share this? Well, I share it in the context of subtraction because understanding this joke is the key to understanding how to subtract big numbers. For example, this is just in case you've forgotten how to do it. If we had a simple subtraction, like 5, 8, 3, minus 2, for one, we don't really suffer any problems. We have a number system where every column has a value, so this number's worth three and this one here's worth one. In this column they're worth ten, so that's actually an eighty and that's actually worth forty, even though it's just an eight and a four. And here we have the hundreds column, so that's actually worth five hundred and that's worth two hundred. And where the numbers on the bottom are smaller than the ones on top, we can perform the subtraction quite easily. We can, we can have three units and take away one unit and have two units. And that is a standalone subtraction. We can have eight tens, take away four tens and still have four tens. Not a problem. And we can have five hundreds, take away two hundreds is three hundreds. That sort of subtraction is quite easy. But what happens when we start, when we get numbers like this, 524 minus 127. Now we run into a problem. 7 is too big to take away from 4 and we are disinclined to go into negative numbers. Not only that, uh, not only are we disinclined, let me say that for many centuries, let's say thousands of years, mathematicians didn't believe in negative numbers. They just treated them as rubbish. They were never investigated, never studied, until relatively recently. 
not very long ago at all. But we certainly don't want to go there with negatives. So how can we take 7 from 4? The answer is we can't. But this is a complete number. Now, I've got to share, there are two ways of doing this, and I'm going to share the more common one today first. And the more common one is this. To say in this number 524, we have five hundreds, two tens, and four units. And these four units can tap the two tens on the shoulder and say, can you lend us some, please? And since that's worth 20, it could split into a 10 and a 10. Now, if we leave one in this column, that's worth 10. In that column, that's our tens column. So we've dropped from two tens down to one 10. And we shift 10 across. Now, when they move into this column, they're actually worth 10 units. Oops. So we write a 1 next to here. Some people make the 1 rather small, but I encourage my students to make it quite large. And we have 14 units now. Take away 7 is 7. It's that simple. The number on the bottom hasn't changed. The number on the top, its value hasn't changed, but we've played this game. Where instead of calling it 24, we're now calling it 2014. One lot of 10 and plus 14. It's still the same as 24. Now, I can't take 2 from the 1, because, again, 2 is larger than 1. So the 1 taps 5 on the shoulder and says, can I have some of yours, please? Now, this column is worth 10 of those. That's how the decimal system works. Every column is worth 10 of the previous. So he'll keep 4 of them in this column and just get rid of them, one, one lot of 10, send them across, and make 11. So we now have 11 tens here. 2 from 11 is 9 in the tens column, and 1 from 4 is 3. That is how it's done. It's called borrowing, and, uh, and it's precisely this kind of joke. So I, I sometimes think of my cab friend when I'm doing this subtraction or teaching it. So let's do another one. In fact, I'm going to do one that is very famous, a subtraction, uh, by Tom Lehrer. He was a mathematician slash physicist, if you like, certainly a mathematician from the United States who uh, played his 88-string guitar, he called it, his piano, uh, back in the 1960s particularly. And uh, I encourage you to search on YouTube for Tom Lehrer. And I'll put a link to his song, The New Math. And in The New Math, he performs this uh, subtraction. 342 take away 179. Now, you can put the minus sign up here or you can put it down here. Is there much of a difference? Not really. Uh, sometimes for tidiness I like it here. It's probably more correct here because when we shift from numbers to algebra, one of the great rules that we le learn in algebra is the, the sign is attached to the number following. So I put the sign with the number following. So it's like a 342 and a negative 179 would be another way of thinking about it. But let's do this. Nine from two we can't do, so we borrow. Notice I write the number above, so I don't try and poke it in between the numbers anywhere. It just gets too untidy. So we drop the 4 by 1 and we move the 1 across, so we now have 12. 12 take away 9 is 3. 7 from 3 we can't do, so we drop this by 1 and carry one bundle of 10 across, so we know that 13. 13 take away 7 is 6, and 2 take away 1 is 1. And that's the newer, if you like, way of doing things. It was became quite popular in Australian schools during the 70s and 80s and onwards. Uh, I'm not sure it's fortunate or unfortunate that I predate that. 
but there's, an, there's another method that we were taught at school and uh, I'll show that to you shortly. But first let me uh, show some of the refinements of this technique. And I encourage you to practice this. By the way, I've cramped it up. It's probably a good idea to spread out a little bit. So let's make a larger number. Uh, and I'm making these up off the top of my head, but let's do this. One, two, zero, uh, five, zero, zero, seven, three, minus nine, one, six, four, three, Eight, seven. Now, this is a large subtraction. If we do these in bundles of three, you can see we're up in the millions. So 12 million, 50,000, 73, and so forth. Let's see how this, is, uh, this subtraction is accomplished using this method. 7 from 3 we can't do, so we borrow. Drop this by 1, bring 1 across. 7 from 13 is 6. 8 from 6 we can't do, so we borrow. And here's the refinement. This is the problem. There's nothing to borrow. In fact, there's nothing in the next column either. So if we want an extra 10 here, we've got to borrow from over here. And we have two ways of doing it. One way would be, I'm going to try and do this lightly, we could cross this off and put a 4 and carry one bunch of 10 across to here to get 10, then borrow one of those, get a 9, carry the 10 across to get a 10, a bunch of those to get a 9, or reduce by 1 and carry a bunch of 10 across to get 16. Now, that's a three or four step procedure. Some people are happier just looking across and saying, in this column here, I know it's a funny way of thinking of it, but we have the number 500 sitting there. And all they do is they put a line through the lot and they say 499. So they borrow one from the entire 500 and bring that bundle of 10 across make 16. Either way, you end up with a 499 and an extra bundle of 10 to make 16 here. So you do whichever, use whichever method you prefer to do it step by step by step by step or whether to do it as a slab. 16 take away 8 is 8, 9 take away 2 is 7, 9 take away 4 is 5, 4 take away 6, we've run into problems again. So we have to borrow we have problems, nothing here, so we go to the next column. Now again, we could treat that as 20 sitting here, and we need to borrow a bundle from that. So I'm going to call that 19 and bring a bundle of 10 across. 14 take away 6 is 8. 9 take away 1 is 8. 1 take away 9 I cannot do. So I go across here, and fortunately there's something here. I reduce it by 1, bring the 1 across, 11 from 11 take away 9 is 2, and I have nothing left at the end to subtract. And there's my answer. That's, they're the refinements, whichever of the two methods you prefer. Treating these as a slab or, or doing it piecemeal. Now I've rushed this, when it's first taught to children we would take some time building up and building up confidence. And I've been working with a young boy recently. Uh, we've been doing little bits of subtraction every week for some weeks. Uh, so it's not just a one lesson activity. But please go over this and look at other videos on YouTube. There are some quite nice ones around explaining the same method. Now, I think I'll change colour. There's an older method. In fact, there are a few of them. What we're talking about here is uh, technically what's known in the trade or the game in mathematics is an algorithm. An algorithm simply means a method. And this algorithm, this form of subtraction, is one such method. Here's another one. 
five, four, two, eight, take away uh, one, six, five, three. And here's the older method. Eight take away three, we can do, that's five. But two take away five, we can't. Now, whereas in the new method we borrowed from within the same number, we borrowed a bunch of one of these and brought it over, it's worth 10 in this column. The older method simply added 10 to this number and added 10 to this number. And if they both went up by 10, then the subtraction, the difference between them, would have stayed the same. So how do we add 10 to both numbers? Well, we add 10 to the 12 by doing that, putting a 1 in front of it, and instead of adding 10 to the 5, we add 10 in this column, and we often just put a little 1 down there to mean that this is no longer 6, it's worth 7, 7 tens. Now, I know this is a hundreds column, just got to remember that every column is worth 10 more than the one in front. So by putting 10 in this column, in this number, and 1 in the next column, which is worth 10 in this number, we've added 10 to both numbers. So you often hear older people talk about one up and one down. So they're putting one up here and one down there. And 12 take away 5 is 7. Now we've got 7. 4 take away 7 we can't do, so one up and one down. 14 take away 7 is 7. And 5 take away 2 is 3. I don't know whether you've ever seen that old method. But this was the one that I was taught at school and uh, was very common. And a lot of parents got very... <coughs> Wow, that was a bowl gone. <laughs> One of, uh, a lot of parents were very upset when this method was taught in school and they didn't understand it, they knew the old method. Not a huge difference between them, but a subtle one. Now, if, I was hoping this would rub off fairly well, if we did perform this sum, 342, minus 179, the old way, we can't take 9 from 2, because it's a, oh dear, I did the wrong sum, the 173, I've got it written down here, I'll have to fix this up. That's a shame, 12 take 03 is 9, well that wasn't much of a change. You can't take 3 from 2, so we put 1 up and 1 down, and we go 12 take away 3 is 9. Now this is worth 8, so you can't take 8 from 4, so 1 up and 1 down, 14 take away 8 is 6, and 3 take away 2 is 1. As you can see, same result, uh, the logic is just a little bit different. Two, two quite different algorithms. Uh, I might in another video share another uh, one or two. There's one in fact that uh, computing science students use uh, with a floating digit and there's uh, another method that I'd like to show you that a, a young, I found a young teenage boy taught himself when he was in primary school. Kind of a funny mishmash of bit of this and a bit of something else, but um, I don't want to put it all into one big video. But you'll find Tom Lehrer, when he sings about this, will say, you know, you can't take 3 from 2, 2 is less than 3, you see, look at the 4 in the tens place. That's really 3 tens, so he's using this method, and you change the 10 to 10 once, you add it to 2, and you get 1, 2, base 10, which is 12, and you take away 3, that's 9. Is that clear? And away he goes. But you'll enjoy his song. And... Uh, I, I trust you'll go and look for it. But there you go, that's how to perform subtraction using two different algorithms. And I look forward to your discussion below the video and uh, to responding to what you have to say. Thank you for watching.